MIT, Scott Drew leading Valpo against Iowa in the opening round. Let's flash back, March 13th, 1998. Who doesn't remember this? Bryce Drew, the buzzer beater, carrying Valpo past Ole Miss. That's Scott's brother. Now Homer Drew watches his son from the stands. It's a family affair. Second half, three minutes left. Valpo down one off the break. Stalin, Ortiz. Ortiz led Valpo with 14 points, four steals. Ortiz driving, no. Anti Nicola, yes, for the putback. Valpo by one. 18 seconds to go. Same score. Chauncey Leslie looking for space. Tough shot. Gets the bucket of fall. 15 points. Iowa up one. Valpo's last chance down one. Ortiz. Ortiz. All air. Nicola. No, we can't handle it. Iowa wins. They're on to the next round. Valpo 4 and 37 all time against the Big Ten. Clemson Tigers didn't go to the NIT, didn't go to the NCAA, so Larry Shiat pressured out of his job as Tigers head coach. Third straight year that they've increased their win total. They were 15 and 13, but not enough. Shiat done with two years left on his contract. At Penn State, Jerry Dunn, done, resigned Monday after eight seasons in State College. In 2001, the Nittany Lions reached the Sweet 16. They've won just 14 games since. PSU will begin searching immediately for its sixth hoop coach since Joe Paterno became the football coach. First round NIT to Paul in North Carolina. Tar Heels in the NIT for the first time in 29 years, Matt Doherty. Tar Heels turning on the pressure off the steal. The 6'6 freshman David Noel, 10 of 13 from the field, 21 points a career high. He also had 11 rebounds. Melvin Scott this time on D. After the fight for the ball, Noel gets it inside, and he'll finish easily. Put the Tar Heels up four. Tar Heels looking to put it away against DePaul. Again off the steal. Jack Emanuel for the love of elevation. Tar Heels go on to win. They'll play the winner of the Wyoming Eastern Michigan game next. More knitting. Georgetown, Tennessee in volunteer land. Hoyas trailing by five. But Brandon Bowman to Shante Cook who gets that one. Hoyas down three. Moments later, let's check what's cooking. And it's still a Shante. Off the glass, Hoyas down one. Next time down, feed the hot hand. Cook for three. And one more time. Cook, a 9-0 run all by his own personal self. He had a career-high 16 in the game. Second half, Hoyas up three. Mike Sweetney gets the rebound. And then, as you see, once you get the rebound, turn tail and haul to the other end, and he will. Hustle is a skill. Sweetney, 17 points, 14 boards. Hoyas in Knoxville, a winner, 70 to 60. Rolls on Wednesday night with Bob Knight and his Texas Tech Red Raiders hosting the WAC tourney runner-up in College Fairfield in the NIT. Troy Bell tore up the Big East for BC, tearing up the mid. Five for eight from three-point land. Later, Craig Smith down low, get him on the block. Nice move. He had 19 points, good from the field. Seven of nine shooting. Let's go with more Eagles. Bell steal. Going in for the easy layup. He had four steals, had 28 points. BC wins it easy, 90-78. What about Villanova and Siena? The Saints prosper. Karanga stealing the pass, and he knows what to do with it. Going coast to coast, 11 points in the game. Siena's Tommy Mitchell gets into the act, hits the J. He led the Saints with 23 points. The Wildcats, Alan Ray sharing to Curtis Sumter. Villanova up two at the half. Sumter at 23 points. The Saints, Justin Miller with a layup. Sienna wins, scoring 52 points in the second half to close it out. Amazing. NIT opener for Nevada, Texas Tech. Bob Knight coaching in the NIT for the first time since 85. And his Hoosiers end up losing to UCLA. That's a sip. Powell picking up a loose ball. He had 15 points. Less than a minute and a half. Andre Emmett steals the ball. And it's going to go from C to shining C. Tech led by nine at halftime over the Wolfpack. 18 points for Dre with the foul. Second half, Nevada's Terrence Green. He's got good basketball DNA. Rises up, going to nail the three. He had eight points, and who's there to root him on? Yeah. Former NBA player A.C. Green. There you go. That's my nephew, he says. Uncle A.C. Andre Emmett swats the ball, leading him. Kasip Powell the layup. Texas Tech goes on to win at 66-54. They'll next face San Diego State in the second round. More than I to say Nick. Ohio State, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech 1-11 all-time against Ohio State. First half, Chris Bosch with the block. 
Jared Jack, great save, and Ishmael Muhammad is there for the reverse. Four boards, eight points for Muhammad. Still in the first half, tie game. Frank Darby, Frank Darby, wild shot. Bosch gets the ball up for Anthony McHenry. Another reverse. Four points in six minutes for him. Yellow Jackets up large. Darby gets it stolen. We go the other way. Muhammad with yet. Don't tell me. Another reverse. So let's put that in reverse and see it again. <laughs> Muhammad with the reverse, reverse. Four of his eight points came on reverse dunks for Muhammad. Brent Darby plays his last college game. Ohio State loses. Hitting Iowa. Iowa was down by as many as 18 in the first half. Second half, different story. Jeff Horner comes up with a steal. Over to Chauncey Leslie. And one. Leslie missed the free throw. Iowa was up one. Under 30 seconds to go. Iowa down. One Leslie. Looking for spades. Creates. Finds it. Iowa by one. Leslie career high 27. 6.2 remaining. B.J. Elder driving to the hole. B.J. hitting the short J with less than a second to go. Take another look. Watch Elder. We arrow him. It looks like he throws an elbow. But there's no call. And then he goes ahead and hits the game winner. So Georgia Tech wins a close one by one. And they, the Yellow Jackets, are in the quarterfinals. Second half, about two minutes left. NIT game. Tar Heels down to Raymond Felton to Rashad McCants. Tough J. We're tied. McCants, 26 points. Just over a minute left. Still tied. Mike Sweetney, who scored 22, finds a wide open true hole. Georgetown wins. We'll face the winner of Minnesota and Temple next. Bob Nye, Texas Tech, facing Georgia Tech. Who's the real Tech? But the other Tech's Chris Bosch silences the crowd. Two handed slamming at 21. Second half, Red Raiders by nine. Bosch. Uh oh. Picked off by Ronald Ross. Andre Emmett picks it up, knows what to do with it. Emmett 29, Texas Tech by 11. Red Raiders by nine in the second. Robert Tomashek to Kasip Powell. 15 for Powell. Texas Tech wins. They'll play the winner of UAB and St. John's as Bob Knight's team moves on. NIT, UAB, St. John's. Yeah, we're focused too. I'm not sure what those mascots were doing. Kyle Cuff, good finish. Nine boards, 10 points for Cuff. Marcus Hatton, always to be seen and heard from when you're talking St. John's. Great move. And then the dish to Anthony Glover. 16 points for Glover, 15 for Hatton. St. John's with a victory. Matt Doherty will always be family in North Carolina, but Tuesday he left the family business, resigned as the Tar Heels head basketball coach under considerable pressure from bosses, boosters, and perhaps most importantly, players. Doherty, three years in charge, actually had the team ranked number one and was named coach of the year during his first season. But the last two seasons ended without bids to the NCAA tournament and complaints from unhappy players. I know that it would be irresponsible of me uh, to, to be aware of those rumors, to be aware of that speculation, and not to treat it seriously. And to treat it seriously, I, I, I believe, requires that we talk to the student athletes. It is not a difficult building process to build strength on strong foundations. Secondly, we have, as Dick has already pointed out, the youngest team in American college basketball that played a very difficult schedule. Uh, this is not an empty cupboard. This is a, this is, this is a great program, and it will, and it will be great again. Doherty's first season at UNC Heels won 26 games. Since then, the teams won only 27 combined the last couple of years. North Carolina didn't fall out of the top 25 in Doherty's inaugural season, but since then, the Heels have been ranked just four out of 36 weeks. Lost games, lost the team. Jay Billis says the breakdown may actually predate Doherty's hiring at UNC. Uh, my sources within uh, the North Carolina Athletic Department, they will tell you that this has nothing to do with basketball-related issues, that Matt Doherty is a good coach and did a good job, and from a basketball standpoint, was headed in the right direction. Th this is a player-coach relationship issue. A and my sources tell me that, that Dick Bedour, uh, the athletic director at North Carolina, felt like this was an issue that was not just related to the University of North Carolina. It was related to uh, Matt Doherty's uh, actions as a coach, even when he was at Notre Dame, and, and it was not not due to just the current players that are there and, and that met with uh, with the athletic director during the past several days, uh, some of uh, whom uh, met with the AD uh, with their parents, that uh, it extended to players that, that played under Matt Doherty uh, in his first year, uh, last year, uh, and this year. Okay, later on Sports Center, who's got next on the Tar Heel bench? There are no shortage of candidates with Carolina connections and the pool of potential employees from outside the Dean Dome is deep and talented as well. 
Julius Page, Chevy Troutman, and Jerron Brown will return for their senior seasons at Pittsburgh. Ben Hallen will reportedly not be their coach. The Los Angeles Times says Hallen will be named the next bench boss at UCLA or the eighth since John Wooden retired. Hallen grew up in Cerritos, California, about 32 miles from Pauley Pavilion. Pitt basketball came of age under him, reaching the Sweet 16 the last two seasons. And St. John's second half red storm down six. Elijah Ingram, the steal, the layup, and the foul. General not going to be pleased with that. Complete the three-point play. It's a three-point deficit. Five minutes left in the second. Red Raiders still up three. Uh, let's tie that at 59. Yeah, change that on the scoreboard. Now, 30 seconds left. Red Storm down one. Will Chavis, the turnover. Marcus Hatton, the steal, the layup. St. John's up one, 64-63. Knight, watch the reaction here. Not happy. Last chance for the Red Raiders. 2.9 left on the inbounds. Chavis gets the ball and the shot off. A fairly good look. Back iron. So close. St. John's wins a tech. Blows a 10-point second half lead. Bob Knight, did he blow anything after the game? The spectator's standpoint, it was a, a really good basketball game from, from at least this coach's standpoint. We'll have to deal with mistakes that we made that uh, that I think took away a chance for us to, uh, to maybe win the game. No blown top for Bob. St. John's wins it 64-63. On to the final where they will meet. Oh. The Thank winner you. of this one, Georgetown and Minnesota. Go for coach Dan Monson said his team had trouble this season with big men, and Mike Sweetney would be the biggest his club had faced, and the baddest. Four steals, three blocks, and what about on the offense? Sweetney, 32 points, 8 of 14 shooting. The big jammy there. The Hoyas turned down an NIT bid last season. This season playing for a trophy. 88-74, it's a Big East final in the NIT final Thursday. IT title game with an old school Big East feel. St. John's and Georgetown. Grady Reynolds. Red Storm up four. Same score. Mike Sweetney. Turn around. He had 25. Boys within two. Some drama. Tony Bethel, a runner. And we are tied at 67. About a minute and a half to go. 10.3 left. Gerald Riley for three. Reynolds, the rebound, gets a timeout. But Georgetown down one. They put 4.1 on after making the first. Elijah Ingram makes the second. St. John's up by three. Same play. Here we go. Georgetown to the other end. Tony Bethel for the tie. Not there. And St. John's wins its sixth NIT championship, 70-67.